Next, it's furniture that doubles as a natural wonder for your home. Get comfortable as Steve Easley explores the beauty and the artistry of handcrafted wood that will last a lifetime. Did you know that it takes over 40 man hours to create a custom wood chair like this? Well, you won't find this in any furniture store, and the reason that you won't is because it's handcrafted and custom made by artisan woodworker Ambrose Pollock in Carmel, California. Can you tell me how you come up with these designs? Oh, this particular chair was designed to complement a table I built several years ago, and a customer ordered six chairs to go with a, another table that was built after that model. I notice that this is made out of koa wood, and you actually have a large slab of that behind us. This comes from Hawaii? That's correct. This uh, tree came from above Kailua Kona, and it was six foot in diameter and about 13 feet long and weighed about 19,000 pounds before it got here. Ambrose, how do you get from that big piece of koa wood to a great looking table like this? I start off with a sketch and I uh, use pencils and paper and we arrive at a design that is pleasing to the customer. I have some sketches in the shop if you care to take a look. I'd love to. Ambrose, what is this a sketch of? Well, this is a sketch of a computer desk. And what are you working on over here? Right now I'm getting ready to make the drawers for here and uh, you can see the drawer front board that also this is a good uh, earmark of quality in furniture when you've got continuous grain across the drawer faces. We'll be making a cut here and here and this, this will drop down to, for the keyboard it, with a, a drop front keyboard. So when you're looking for furniture you want to make sure then that basically like the drawer fronts all the grain matches instead of just you know several pieces put together. That's what I would look for yes. And then we're going to be using a dovetail joint that's also a good earmark of quality in a piece of furniture. This is a a typical example of a through-cut dovetail. There's also blind dovetails, but this one here comes apart and goes together real nice and tight. When you put glue in there, that's not going to come apart. That's good and strong this is the side and the face, and then we'll be putting this front over the face of that. So I can show you now how I was going to cut those okay. joints. Put a little ear protection on. And this guy here is actually the template? Right. This is the, so we can cut even through joints here. This is the, the, the dovetail part and the pins are cut with this jig using a straight bit. You can see this bit is flared and has a little rub collar, a ball bearing collar. That rides inside the template. Right. So you make the same cut every time, you never have to worry about measuring really, this automatically does well, it. You just have to set it up right. I just have to set the depth of cut for different thicknesses of drawer side. So that's really the only adjustment I need to make is the depth of the cut. So I'll turn that on now and you can see how this works. Looks like that makes pretty easy work of it all. Yeah, it makes a real clean joint. Um, one of the reasons that I get such clean cuts is that the router is backed, the, the bit is backed by this hardwood, which normally if you didn't you back it, it would, out here. it would blow out the back yeah. of this. And this is actually two pieces. Correct. Well, that'll make a great, good, strong joint. It's the best. Now, you can have the best joinery work in the world, but if you don't have a good finish, you can really muck up a piece of furniture pretty quick. So you can show us some tips on how to apply finish? Sure can. Let's go take a look at that. Well, Ambrose, you're sanding a piece of walnut here, but what steps do you go through to get the kind of finishes that you get on the pieces that you make? Okay, for this piece, I will go and start off with 120 grit because I've done already some preparation, and I'll end up with 180, which is a much finer grit than 120. Now, I'll put the sander aside, and then I'll pick up a scraper over here. Why the scraper? The scraper allows me to skip a, a step. By, instead of sanding forever, I will be taking this milky surface off here, which is basically wood particle filled with dust. So I'm going to be scraping to show This is just steel, right? Wow. It's a microscopic. Wow, it works sharp. Well, really good. Just shaves it right off. Yeah. And it feels so smooth. And then I will clean all the dust off here. All right, I can help you there. Yeah, and then I'll come in here with some oil. 
Now, what is this exactly? It was a mixture of uh, a tongue oil type of and, and linseed oil and mineral spirits. I, I thin it out with mineral spirits to get it to penetrate on the first two coats. Now, how long will you take putting the finish on one of your pieces? I'll take probably a, the equal amount of time as I have spent building the, with an really? oil rub finish. Right. If I was doing a varnish finish or a sprayed on finish uh, with a catalyzed varnish, I could probably reduce that by 25 to 30 percent. So you put a, really put a lot of time in this. Now, how many steps will you go through doing this? I'll do this three different times, and then I'll apply a, a, a wax coating after that and buff it off with an automotive type buffer. But I'll show you the results here, and you can actually see some of the quality of the wood. Now this is 220, so you're not going to see the sheen as if I had 600. But I can get a, a mere quality finish if you get down and look at this with a low angle. And that's why it gives it really that hand rub look, is because you're actually hand rubbing. That's and it gives it. it that deep lustrous look that you don't see in some commercial factory finishes. That's right. They don't spend the time. Certain companies will sort of get there. but. But yeah, and it feels that. really smooth, even though you haven't even got to the final end of the product. Now, you have a table over here where you've actually went through the whole process, and it looks great. Same wood, same finish, but I've gone through all the steps. One of the great things about custom wood furniture is that you can create or even recreate any look and furniture that you want. This chair is a fine example of a Morris chair from the arts and crafts movement of the early 1900s. Another great thing about custom wood furniture is that since it's handcrafted, it can last for generations to come. That's our show for today. Thanks for joining us. Remember, for a beautiful addition to your home that will last a lifetime, consider handcrafted wood furniture. You can enjoy it and keep it in your family for generations to come. And remember, there's nothing like coming home to your new house. We'll see you next time.